Hey there, friends. How about a lazy cat sitting in a comfy chair with some light glowing down? Why not, right? Grab your drawing and coloring supplies, good old sheet of copy paper, and come join me. Grab your kids if you want. Don't feel like you gotta. This could just be me and you time. All right, so I thought, you know, maybe we've been spending some extra time at home and maybe we like to allow our animals to get up on the furniture. So why not draw a sleeping cat in a big old sofa chair, okay? So this is just a sheet of copy paper. I, of course, am using a Sharpie so you can see what I'm doing, but you, on the other hand, are going to want to use a pencil. That way, if you mess up, you can erase. Even though there's not really mess ups in art, they always are just happy accidents. So I want the base of my chair to be towards the bottom of the paper, but not all the way at the bottom. So I am going to draw almost a rectangle and I'm gonna to try to make it even on both sides. So I try to make it kind of come up to the same top level, okay? Then I am going to curve like a smile, curve like a smile, okay? This curve is gonna come around and down and over and up and around, just like that, okay? Kind of looks like an upside down music note, doesn't it? Next, we are going to draw a frowny face. So this is the arms of the chair, like the, the where you would rest your arm, and then this is the cushion now. I got a little carried away on that side, but that's okay. So we want a frowny face. Down here, we're going to draw the legs of the chair. So they're almost just like little rectangles or squares. And then the back little leg, we might see just a little bit of it, just like that. That's the leg that's back at the back of the chair, right? Okay. Next, we're going to do a major frowny face. And if you don't want it to be curvy, yours could be more rectangly. It's really whatever shape you want your chair to take on. Okay, so there's my, the back of my sofa or my uh, recliner chair or wing back chair, whatever we want to call that. Now, we could put like a little blanket that's kind of draped over the back. Frowny face, frowny face, frowny face, frowny face, frowny face. And of course, do some little fringe. There we go. There, that's pretty cute, right? Put a little bit of fringe on there. Okay. Next, we don't want our chair to just be floating in the air. So what if we drew a rug underneath our chair and maybe it kind of takes on, I did four on this side, so one, two, three, four. Kind of takes on that fringe look right there. Come all the way across and Add some more little fringes. Now, is this all exactly proportioned? No, this is just for fun. Kind of mark our, our time we've been spending at home, right? Then we might have a, what if we had like a lamp kind of shining down? So a little bit of a curve, a little bit of a curve, diagonal, curve at the top to connect, curve around like that, curve right here, or maybe that could be like the light bulb, and then maybe it's, oh my goodness, super long, and a curve here, and then we'll put the base of the lamp 
right there. So it looks like a smushed C, like that. Okay, and then of course we might have the light on. And I need to draw the actual like ground line. Okay, so we have our background, we have our ground, we have our rug, we have our chair. Oh, I don't know, maybe, maybe we have a big picture window back behind the chair. There we go. So it's like a big rectangle. Or it could just be like a really big piece of art back there, right? Or you could put multiple picture frames back there. It's really up to you. So now we have this great window back there. Um, we've got our ground, we've got our rug. Then what if right here on the chair, we draw a little triangle, little triangle like that. Okay, those are gonna be some ears. Then we draw a U or a smile to connect. Connect at the top, draw a little paw, draw a little paw, and then we've got the body of the cat, loop around to the tail, and then we might have two more little paws, right? So I'll freeze it right there for a minute. So you guys can check it out. Now on the tail, I would definitely erase right there. Okay, so right there where the back of the chair goes, I would erase that. So that way um, it looks like it's connected to the body. And then if it's a sleeping cat, we've got some little closed eyes, a little bitty triangle. Oh, my little Sharpie's not quite sharp enough for this. So some closed eyes little upside down triangle nose smiley face smiley face for the mouth and if you want to put some whiskers great i'm afraid that my sharpie's not quite sharp enough for that okay now you get to decide are you going to do markers are you going to do crayons are you going to do colored pencils are you going to do a little bit of everything how are you going to color this in the most important thing though is take your time try to make your coloring lines kind of go the same direction left and right or up and down maybe on the ground they're left and right and on the wall they're up and down it's really up to you but this is a fun project because it kind of ties in a little bit of architecture, right? Okay, so um, get my stuff where I can see it a little better. So this might be hmm, like a brown wooden grained floor. So I might have like the wooden panels go across like that all the way across and then I might put some kind of wood grain in there kind of help it look a little bit more realistic ish although this is super cartoony right very cartoony look, but that's okay because this is just for fun. This is supposed to be like our escape, right? And my rug, hmm. I am kind of envisioning, oh, I don't know, like a, like a rectangle design. So I might go red, orange, yellow, purple, 
screen. I'm running out of room though, aren't I? And finish off with blue. So I didn't get to the purple. Maybe my chair will be purple. Why not, right? There we go. Like that. Maybe do purple outline here. Outline in here. There we go, and I'm trying to stay in the lines. Now, obviously I could have went ahead and colored in with the markers as well, or you could trace with marker, color with a crayon. It's really whatever. Sometimes these little chairs have like these little, little buttons that kind of push in. Make it feel a little fluffier. Maybe I'm making this up, but why not? Something like that, kind of. Right? Maybe? Okay. Maybe my blanket sort of matches, and maybe it goes... Maybe it also goes in rainbow order a little bit. Red, orange, although I don't think I'm gonna be able to fit them all on there again, but that's okay. Yellow. Green. Blue. There we go, and then I would finish with purple, I guess, actually. There we go. And then, of course, I gotta think about, you know, what's gonna be out the window? Is it daytime, is it nighttime? You know, you gotta think about those things. There we go. Add a little brown up here, too, so it kinda matches the brown down on the ground. Okay, this might be silver, and the pole might be silver, ooh, or you could do gold, you could do black, really, you can do whatever color you want because this is your art. Go ahead and color in the light and the light shining down let your light shine on in okay and maybe I have I don't know maybe I have a pink little wall maybe I have pinstripe wallpaper right why not yeah why not it's all for fun. Now in my real house, would I have pink stripe wallpaper? Probably not. But you never know. It was really cute, right? All right. Okay. And there we go. Now, oh. Maybe this is an orange cat. And since it's so small, I'm just gonna go ahead and color it in with the marker. Color pencil would be good though if you wanted to try to like make it multicolored. Like if you wanted to add, you know, some browns or blacks or grays or whatever in there with your cat. Okay, let's get started. I think I will just dump all those out so it makes it easier for me to see what's going on. 
And then, of course, when I color with crayons, I like my colors to kind of all go the same direction. There we go. And then this is red up here. Okay. And you know what? I think I didn't ever finalize my lamp here, did I? Okay, I'll go ahead and do the legs on the chair. I guess normally those are probably brown or black, but that's okay. I'll think about what color that lampshade's gonna be. I haven't decided yet. Sometimes it's okay to color like the majority of your paper and, until you decide. Okay, orange. I like to do rainbows a lot just because it's art, right? It's colorful that way. And yellow. And green. I'm going to use this um, rainforest green. I really like it. It has a little bit of like maybe a bluish tint to it, but I think it's pretty. And blue. Here's blue to full, which is like a dark blue. Sometimes I wonder where they come up with crayon names. You know, like whose job is that? Is, is that somebody in particular's job or is it like a group decision? How do they come up with all these fun crayon names? Like macaroni and cheese I've seen before. Like there's some fun crayon names. And violet. There we go. There was no room for purple on the rug. That's okay. Then, do I want to do blue violet or just violet? Hmm. Maybe just violet. I'm going to kind of follow the curve of the chair. This all filled in. And get the rest of the chair filled in. There we go. And I like to color the direction that the art feels like it's going, right? So I try to color in same directions here and there. Then we'll do some brown on the ground. It's always hard to color next to the edge, so I always try to hold the edge of the paper down by where I'm coloring, keep it from turning up or even tearing. That used to happen to me when I was a kid a lot. It would tear and I would get so upset. And if that happens to you, I've learned, you just put a little piece of tape on the back side of the tear and then it's no big deal. This tape came right off. Restick that on there. Oh, what did I, oh, there it is. There's my brown, okay. Uh, but anyway, you put a little piece of tape on the back side of your paper where the tear is, and then you can't see that oopsie, right? Gray was on the lamp. There we go. And then up here, I still haven't decided. I think I'm going to do this blue-green for outside. Now, of course, I could have put way more detail back there, like I could have drawn some trees and some grass and sunshine or whatever, but that's okay. You do you. 
whatever works for you. And then I really like, I think it's this red violet, yeah. This red violet, it's kind of a cool color. And since my stripes on the wall are going up and down, I'm gonna do my coloring on the wall up and down, being careful not to color things that I've already colored, including the marker lines, just because the red violet's a little bit darker, so I don't wanna hide those or cover them up. Same thing on the top edge, you just got to be careful so you don't rip up your paper. Alright, so we got all of that colored in. The last thing is the lampshade. Maybe just do a purple lampshade. I don't know. Kind of match the purple chair. And I might even just go ahead and color it in with the marker. Like that. Okay. There we go. Kind of feels like Granny's chair, right? I love it. So cute. I hope that you guys had a great time using your imagination. I hope that you put your own twist on things. Of course, this could have been a doggy. You could have drawn yourself there. Of course, like we talked about earlier, we could put whatever we wanted to outside. So I hope that you had a good time using your imagination and designing a little space of a room, uh, just like an architect or even a fashion, not a fashion, excuse me, an interior designer would do. So interior designers design the inside of spaces. Architects actually design the physical building, right? So thanks guys so much for hanging out with me. Make sure, like, share, subscribe, all that awesome stuff. Please, please, please comment down below. I love to hear from you guys, okay? Have a super awesome day and I cannot wait to do some more art with you.